In the other video, I focused mostly on the appearance of the graphs of uh, square root functions and how they're modified when you change the constant values, whether they're added under the root, as they are here in the second uh, example here, or outside the root, the way they are in the third example. Um, what I want to do in this lesson is kind of uh, go through and plot some points for each of these. So uh, those of you who are a little more number oriented and a little less visual oriented will have the opportunity to kind of see how this works on your own on your own turf, so to speak. So let's take a look first at uh, just the parent uh, parent function. If we pick some values for x, uh, 9, 4, 1, 0, kind of my standard perfect squares there, then y of course would be the square roots of those, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And if we graph those points, uh, 9 and 3 is right here, um, 4 and 2 is right here, 1 and 1 is right here, and 0, 0 is right here. So this is that, that parent function. Let me actually graph that in yellow because that's the color we had those points drawn in there. So the parent function goes off kind of like this. Pardon my lack of artistry there. Hopefully you get the idea. Um, and then the second graph we're looking at will be y equals the square root of 3x. So the difference here is that when we put in a number for x, we're going to multiply that number by 3 before we take the square root. Now obviously we're going to come up with some, some less uh, easy numbers here, a little more complex answers. So I'm going to run them through a calculator. Um, but if we start with, say, uh, x is 3, then we take 3 times 3, which is 9, and the square root of 9, which is also 3. So if x is 3, y is 3. So that gives us a point right here. Um, if x is 1, then we take 3 times 1, that's 3, and then we take the square root of 3, which is about 1.7 for y. So then we have a point of x is 1, y is a little less than 2, right about there. And if we say x is 0, well then y is still going to be square root of 0, so it's still going to hit right there on the origin. So we'll still have a point right here. Let's try one more just a little higher. Let's do um, x is 4, say. If x is 4, then we get 4 times 3, that's 12. And the square root of 12 is about 3 and a half. So if x is 4, y is 3 and a half. Right about there. And maybe one more. Let's do 5. 5 times 3 is 15. And the square root of 15 is about 3.9. So 3.9 right here. So if x is 5, y is 3.9. So you can see it's already starting to starting to level off. This one then goes up just a little bit more steeply at the beginning and then starts to level off a little above where the other one is, but, but definitely at that point uh, kind of heads off in very similar directions. So really the biggest difference it makes when you add a number under the root is that you go shooting up right away before you start to balance back out. And it makes sense because obviously the number we're putting in then is going to end up being bigger right away because we're multiplying it before we take the root. Now finally the last one here, um, our third option, we'll use those same, uh, same few values we started with. Let's do uh, 9, 4, 1, and 0. So now we have this square root of 9 which is 3, but then we add 3 to it. So if y or x is 9, y then is 6, and if x is 4, then we have the square root of 4, that's 2, plus 3 is 5. And if x is 1, the square root of 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4. And if x is 0, y is 3. So for the first time here, when x is 0, y is something else, and that's something we haven't seen before. So let's go ahead and graph these. Then we have a point at 9, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, clear up here. So 9, 6. And then we have one at 4, 5, right there, at 1, 4, at 0, 3. And what happens now if we put in a negative value for x? We've noted that we couldn't do a negative value before. Is that still the case? Well, yes, it is, because try and take the negative square root of x, we can't get it, because we're just trying to add a number to the outside, and there is no value there. So this graph just starts clear up here and then has a similar arc to the very first one, but starts up higher 
on the xy graph. Still, none of these cross the, the y-axis.